The Colorado River is an icon of world rivers. It travels over 1,400 miles and drains seven western states. The headwaters originate high in the Rocky Mountains. Its waterways cut through the innumerable canyons and gorges of the plateau country before its waters slow and spill onto the lower Colorado River plain. The river meanders through three major deserts of the southwest and before its waters were captured, stored, and diverted, it emptied into the Sea of Cortez. Now its waters nourish a half dozen metropolises and irrigate major agricultural areas in the U.S. and Mexico. Before man altered its course, the sediment-laden waters of the river sustained a complex aquatic ecosystem and an expansive forest. What was once a diverse wetland, popular with migratory and non-migratory birds, became overgrown with invasive plant species. Crime flourished and the wildlife went elsewhere in search of a habitat. In 1999, the city of Yuma, the Quitsan Indian tribe, and the Yuma Crossing National Heritage Area implemented the cleanup of the river east of downtown, now known as the Yuma East Wetlands. We knew that it was going to take an extraordinary effort to get this project off the ground. The difficulty at that time was the land ownership was so complex. Trying to get everybody to agree, it was, it was deemed to be infeasible. Essentially, you had some very uh, large tracts of salt cedar, which were just isolated and not contributing anything in a diverse way. It was just almost like a monoculture or a culture of one species of plant. You know, you were talking about an area that was a no man's land that people would not go to. Um, you know, 20 to 30 foot high Arundo and salt cedar. The community turned its back on the river in the late 60s and early 70s. The homeless element came in, the criminal element came into the river. This place was so horribly overgrown that uh, uh, there were probably 50 or 60 well established uh, transient camps down in here. From here to Morales Dam was always a heavy traffic area for drugs and illegal alien activity. Um, with the brush gone, that problem has drastically reduced. By bringing all the stakeholders together, the Yuma East Wetlands Project has been able to get people to the point where if everybody says yes, the project's a good idea, it's not essential to resolve some of the boundary conflicts. The East Wetlands has turn the community around in terms of the potential for healing and repair of a really degraded area. People are now starting to come up and watch us work and, and from the policeman on beat to, the, to the, the, the jogger on the levee, everybody just wants to shake our hand and congratulate us for the job we're doing and for what an improvement we're creating. The East Wetlands Project is a drastic change from what it used to be. This restored marshland is inviting wildlife, especially shorebirds, clapper rails, herons, egrets, back into the wetlands, whereas before uh, they just weren't coming in. Personally, I thought the East Wetlands was kind of a, a waste of time, effort, and attitude. And now that it is cleaned up and, and uh, you can see what is out there, uh, I think it's a big plus for the, for the community. Some of us hard conservatives appreciate things that carry themselves. This is doing a pretty good job of that. To see a true community emerge from something so simple as, you know, hey, we're going to tear out some salt cedars and put in some native plants. Uh, that's what's made this so astounding, so incredible, so remarkable, is that it's so much bigger than just, you know, planting some plants. It's really about community.
Thank you.